Hi there and welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. In this week's episode, we're going to learn is there any advantage to having two 100 watt solar panels with one Jackery 500? We'll learn about that and more in this week's episode, so stick around. I'm sure that there are a few of my subscribers that are not aware exactly what something like this is. The industry refers to these as solar generators. There are many brands. Jackery is reviewed as having good quality and being reliable and the such. And so far from my experience in the few months that I've had it, I'd have to agree. However, some of you might just say, well, this is a rechargeable lithium battery, which you can call it as well, doesn't matter. But essentially, instead of you deriving power from a gas generator, this is being referred to as a solar generator in the industry. Now, why would somebody even want something like this? Well, when you're camping, you might have a 12 volt refrigerator, maybe a USB fan in your Jeep. Maybe you've got some cameras and some equipment that you need to keep batteries charged some lighting at the campsite, all kinds of uses. And so these are very popular with people who are going overlanding and camping and the such. So with that being said, if at some point you're looking at getting something like this, you wanna know how I got it cheaply, you may wanna check out this video, Jackery for my Jeep, because I discuss how I purchased this inexpensively. Let's move on to the video. So I decided to get myself one and I shared in that other video how to get it as inexpensively as possible. But the question I have is, would having two solar panels be of any advantage when using a Jackery 500? And now you might ask, why on earth would I have two 100 watt solar panels? Well, when I was filming the unboxing of the arrival of my solar panel, I discovered that it had been damaged, maybe in delivery or wherever. So I contacted Jackery and they immediately sent me a replacement. When I asked them how to ship the damaged panel back to them, they just told me I could keep it. I guess they're not going to sell a damaged one to somebody, so lucky me. <laughs> and uh, kudos to the customer service at Jackery, I have to admit that. That was something I read in the reviews about Jackery and from my personal experience, it is excellent. But now let's move on to addressing the question. Now that I was faced with having two solar panels, I wondered, hey, is that gonna be an advantage because I've got two solar panels, maybe it'll charge up this battery a little quicker. And so I was posting that question out in some of the online forums and what I was hearing is that it won't be of an advantage because the Jackery will only take about 75 watts maximum of solar power input from the panel. Now the panels are 100 watt, so even if I had 80% efficiency from the solar panel, I won't get 80 watts going into the battery. I'll just be getting 75 watts going into the battery because that's the maximum. And I still started thinking, well, what about if I'm getting only 30 watts because there's lots of clouds in the sky, which is, you know, happens almost every day. Would two solar panels help? And so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and investigate this. And as I looked into it, I learned how, you know, if your solar panels are connected in parallel or series, it makes a difference. And for my purpose, like in the Jackery 1000, they're to be connected in parallel. So I figured that's what I needed to do. So here's the steps that I followed. I contacted Jackery and I explained how I bought the Jackery 500 and a 100 watt solar saga panel and that the Jackery 1000 had a Y adapter and I wanted to purchase one. They just went ahead and sent it to me. So again, kudos to the uh, customer service at Jackery. And here's the cable. There's two six millimeter female barrel adapters on it that connect in parallel. And then this plug is to go into the Jackery. Now, this is the adapter that comes with the Jackery 1000, which has the Anderson connector on the Jackery 1000. The Jackery 500, it does not have this kind of adapter. So I need to change this into a six millimeter male barrel adapter. 
and if you could find one and you know how to cut this wire and connect one of those on there you could do that I couldn't find one and I didn't know how to do that so what I did was on Amazon I purchased this cable which has a six millimeter male plug so I could plug it into my Jackery 500 and then it has the Anderson adapter at the end to plug in to the Jackery's Y adapter so this plug and this Y adapter now just plug into each other like this okay so now I have what I need and now it's time to do the test so let's have a look at some results I'm going to plug solar panel A into the Jackery 500 and it's inputting 62 watts. Solar panel B. Sixty-three watts. So now I'm going to put solar panel A and solar panel B connected in parallel through the Y connector and my Anderson adapter. And I'm getting 70 watts. So when I'm experiencing optimum conditions like I am right now, where it's full on sunshine, we're approaching noon, I'm going to hit the 75 watts maximum using one of these panels. So having a second panel won't be of advantage in conditions like that. However, as many of you have experienced when you're camping, it's not always full on sunny days. And if you've been powering your 12 volt fridge and on the next day, it's a little bit overcast, you still need to charge up your battery so that your fridge can remain powered and keep cool. So what I have is solar panel A getting plugged into the Jackery. And at this angle, with the cloud cover that we have today, I have 22 watts being fed into the Jackery, charging up the Jackery. Let's take a look at how this other panel will do, solar panel B. So now I have solar panel B, and with solar panel B, it's feeding in 23 watts. So both of these are operating about the same efficiency given that the angle that they're on and given the cloud cover today. And if I was at a campsite, I would possibly be also dealing with shadows from trees and leaves and the such. Now with the two of them connected in parallel, let's see the performance on the amount of watts being pumped into the Jack 3500. So now we're getting about 67 watts being fed into the Jackery. So the answer is yes, there is an advantage to using two 100 watt solar panels when you don't have optimum conditions. Because once the sun gets up a little higher in the sky and the clouds are gone, and one of these panels will reach 75 watts, the second panel won't increase the number of watts going into the Jackery. So it's clear if you're not in optimum conditions, like for example when the sun is at a low angle and you're still needing to charge the battery, having two definitely is helpful. For example, when I was on the Sault Ste. Marie trip and it was overcast, I was able to boost the input of the watts going into the battery to charge it quicker because I had the two solar panels and I was able to get this boosted up to 100% so I can continue running my fridge no problem and recharge my computer and my batteries for the camera etc. So if you find a second solar panel on sale or if you're camping somewhere and somebody isn't using their panel because they're all charged up knowing that it'll still boost the input into the battery when it's not optimum conditions that's something that you might want to consider doing. So I hope that you found this information helpful We'll move on into our tips segment so I can talk to you about 
the connectors and a couple other tips and if you find it helpful please make sure to give the video a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe but now let's move on to our tip segment now for some cheaper jeeper tips when I was camping in Lake Superior Provincial Park, I had the solar panels outside of the Jeep, but I had the battery inside the Jeep, and I ran the cable past the door. I just want to share with you a tip on how you could do that so you don't cause damage to your cable. For example, if you were running the solar cable into the Jeep through the door here, and you close the door, it's going to bind on your cable, and eventually you're going to ruin your cable. And that was an expensive solar panel. You don't want to be causing damage to it. So the tip I have for you is if you wanted to run this cable or actually any cable into your Jeep, there seems to be a very efficient area right here. There seems to be an opening right here under the hinge where the cable is not binded in any way. There is some resistance because of the rubber seal, which is good, but there's no binding happening on the cable. So this is a safe area for you to run a cable into the Jeep, whether it's for your solar panel or anything. So I hope you found this tip helpful. Now let's move on and hear what our subscribers have to say. And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip comes from a subscriber after having watched How to Remove Scratches Easily. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, you ever thought about DIY limb razors to keep them off your Jeep a bit? Signed, Pretzel. Hey Pretzel, that's a great idea for a future episode. Thank you very much. And if any of you out there have some subscriber tips that you'd like to share, please feel free to put them in the comments section below as they may make it into a subsequent video. Thank you very much. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it interesting. And if you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Until the next time, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.